In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to plot some simple information. Now, it's important to note that there is a difference between observational data and theoretical data. Theoretical data is a continuous line, and observational data is nothing more than a set of points. So we're going to start off with observational data. For that, let's just say we have x equals, we'll say 1 to 5, and let's suppress that, and let's make sure our spacing is proper. Next, we'll say that y equals, and we'll come up with uh, five random numbers. Let's say two, seven, four, three, and nine. Make them all positive. Now, to plot all of this, we just say plot x comma y. And if I run this, again, we're going to run the section, then what will pop up right in front of us is a figure. Now, several different things. So first, I said it's important to note that we're plotting observational data. Observational data should occur as discrete points, as in little markers, okay, not a continuous line. Now in this case, MATLAB has not plotted a continuous line. It has only connected the points 1, where x is 1, y is 2, right here, to x is 2, y is 7, right here, to x is 3, y is 4, right here, so on and so forth. It's connected these with a simple line. Now I don't want that because that doesn't show my observational data the way I want, so I'm going to come over here, I'm going to type help space plot. And in my command window, I'm going to have all of the help information for the plot function. But what I'm really interested in is this information right here in these three columns. These are all of the, sh the colors that my markers and my lines could be. These are all of the shapes that my markers could take on. These are all of the line types that I could use as well. So if I want observational data, so just a simple thing, we're going to start with circles. I'm going to run this again. When I click run section, we're waiting, we're waiting. We're waiting, mm, nothing's happening. So what happened? Let me come down here. It seems that my figure window is, is still open, so I had to go hunt and find my figure window. That is because when we plot information in MATLAB, MATLAB asks two sequential questions. Number one, you've initiated a plot command. Do I have a figure window already open? In the case of that example, we did already have a figure window open. Therefore, the second question that MATLAB asks is, have you told me to save any of the information in that figure window? Herein, we don't have any commands that have told MATLAB or that have led MATLAB to think that we want to save the information that we just plotted. So the answer to that question is no. So MATLAB first says, do I have a figure window open? Yes. Have you told me to save that information? No. Okay, I'm going to scrap all of that information and use the figure I have and start over. So notice we don't have a line anymore. That was our old plotting information. And also note that our plot is exactly what we wanted, but it occurred in the back background in the figure that we already had open. Well, I'm going to close that figure window so that I don't have it open anymore. And right here after clear, I'm going to type close all. So clear clears the workspace. CLC clears the command window. Close all closes any open figure window. So that every time I run this code now, it's going to pop up to the front every single time. And that's exactly what I want, because now what I'm producing pops up to the front, and anything that I had produced in the background isn't, you know, still in the background. So that's a, another thing that we're going to talk about at a later point, where we can utilize the figure command and not eat up a lot of space in our memory. We're not done here, though, okay? We want to put all of the proper formatting, because a picture is only worth a thousand words if there's enough information in the picture for a user to, to have. So we're going to say X label, and we're going to spell it correctly. We're going to say these are experiment numbers, which we'll say is n, and the unit for those is going to be just number sign. And then we're going to have a y label. We're going to say that this is, I don't know, sample mass. It's like this is a chemistry experiment. So m, and we'll say this is in grams. We're going to need a title. And this is going to be, uh, I don't know, we'll call it Chemistry Lab 1 uh, Data. We'll just do that. Now, here's the thing. When you create your title, you don't want to say experiment number versus sample mass. You, the user could or a reader could already divine that from looking at what's on the horizontal axis, what's on the vertical axis. We want to give some context as to where this came from. Now, we also want to say grid on because we want to provide the user or the reader with some information, at least a guide, a set of guides, graphical guides, so that they can interpolate through their through this plot. I run this and now I have an X label, I have a Y label, I have a title, and I have a grid. 
Now there's one last thing. Whenever we make a picture, which is what we're doing when we plot information, we don't like to have information slammed up against the right edge or slammed up against the left edge or the bottom edge or the top edge. So we're actually going to change the constraints for the axis. Here we're starting at x equals 1, y equals 2. Why not start at the origin, right? I mean, that would look cleaner. And then we come out to x equals 5 and y equals 9. So let's come out to x equals 6. It's, we're going to go back uh, one entire counting number or one integer to 0. Let's go forward. And then we'll go from the origin up to, let's say, 10. We'll just make it nice and even. For that, we use something called the axis command. And for the axis command, if I come to my command window, the very first version of the axis command looks like this, where I have axis. And then I have an array. I know it's an array because I have an open bracket and I have a closed bracket. And in my array, I have four numbers, my x min, x max, y min, and y max. So I'm going to come in. I want to start at 0, 0, so my x min is 0. I'm going to start at my x max, which is one more than the number of data points that I had, so 6. And I'm going to go my y max, and then we said, I'm sorry, my y min at 0, and my y max at, we said, 6. So now, let's start with that figure up. This is what that figure looked like, and this is what the new figure looks like. Now our first data point is here, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and they all lie in the field. So that's how we plot simple information. In our next uh, video or tutorial, we're going to talk, talk about plotting multiple data sets, much in the same way. And we're going to start with this exact same information. So if you've written this code out, this will stand as a good starting point for the next uh, example. So till next time.